How do you make a whisky smoky? You use peat. Smokiness in malt whisky comes from this stuff. It doesn't come from brown water. It comes from the burning of peat. Now, what is peat? Peat is like baby coal. It's all this vegetation that you can see all around me. The heather, the bog cotton, the sphagnum moss, the orchids, the trees, all being compressed down over millennia. Peat grows at about a rate of one millimetre a year. So a peat bank such as this one is thousands of years old. Because Scotland is occasionally slightly damp, and because the bedrock is very hard, it doesn't get compressed into coal, so it's like halfway in between. So on the highlands and in the islands of Scotland, this was a natural fuel. So when it came to having to dry the barley, this was the way that it was done. So automatically, you're introducing flavour into your whisky. People often ask, well, won't you run out of peat? Well, have a look around. This landscape is covered in it. There's plenty of peat to go around. In fact, the industry is very good at using less and less peat every year, but still maximising the amount of smoke by grinding it up. What they're wanting is smoke. They're not necessarily wanting heat. Let's have a look at how peat is composed and how you cut it and how you get access to what you need. The first thing you'd do would be take off this top surface with the spad more or that's Gaelic for big spade, and you take this turf and you place it down. This will then bind to the ground underneath it and start to grow again. Then you cut down and take off a little slice. This will give you a peat that looks a bit like this. You can see how this is all covered in roots. It's quite fibrous. It's these roots that are going to give you the maximum amount of smoke. So it's, this is great for whisky making purposes, this top layer of peat. So that's going to give you the maximum smoke, all these little roots, bits of heather and stuff growing in here, like heather roots as well. Below that, things get darker and deeper. It's like cutting down into big chocolate ganache. And things get much thicker and more compressed. This is the peat you would use in your home. This is more like coal. It's very dark. So if you're making a peat fire, you throw some of that on for heat and you throw some of this on for the smoke. Peat is different all around Scotland because the vegetation over the millennia has been different as well. On Isla, for example, there's some marine vegetation locked into the peat, perhaps bits of seaweed, also much more salinity coming through. So when you burn Isla peat, you get a different set of what is known as phenols or flavour compounds, more creosol, which gives that distinctive note of tar in many uh, Isla whiskies. On the mainland, because there are many more trees, you get a different sort of peat. And the peaty whiskies from the mainland have much more of a wood smoke aroma to it because you've got all this wood compressed within the peat itself. And on the island of Orkney, the peat is totally different again because there's no trees in Orkney, because of the incredible wind and the salty air up there. There, the peat is composed entirely of heather, so no surprise, when Orkney peat is burnt, you get this distinctive, scented, heathery aroma. Peat isn't just peat, it's a flavour-giving machine. Looking into a peat bank is a bit like being an archaeologist. You're gazing into the past. Here's the top layer. You can see the, the current vegetation, all this heather and grass and sphagnum moss. And you've got the roots coming down. So this is the bit that you're going to be taking off and placing down. You can see down here you know, how the previous year's peats are already beginning to grow up and the turf is linked in together. This is a, the first layer of peat you're wanting, so you still see some fibrous materials, but that's been compressed, you know, that's, that's hundreds, hundreds, maybe thousands of years old. And deeper down again, you're getting into the real black peat, the one that you're wanting for all your heat. And right down here, look, here we've got some tree root, you know, thousands of years old, buried very, very deep. If you dig any deeper, you might even find a dead body. Peat's very good for preserving bodies, or so I'm told. In the old days, when every distillery would have had its own maltings, 
If they've shut during the summer months, it's difficult to malt barley during the summer. And the entire workforce would come up onto the peat moss to dig the peats for the next year's production. So whole gangs of men would be up here, working away, cutting their peats, smoking their pipes, singing songs, having a wee dram of whiskey every so often, and fighting off the infernal midges as well. But listening to things like the Skylark song. What they would do, they'd be cutting up the peat, and then they would dry it, so they would be stacking it up in what we call stooks. Little pyramids. So you've got the wind coming through here, drying out the peat, and it would sit here for maybe a week, a couple of weeks, it might rain, so it might take a little bit longer, until the peat was dry, and then all the dried peats would be taken back down into the distillery and stored, ready for use in the next season's distillation. There's a great rhythm to whisky making in those days. You planted your barley in the spring. In the early summer, you would come out and you would dig your peats and dry your peats. Then you would harvest your barley in the autumn and start making the whisky. As winter was coming along, so your beasts would be brought in from the fields into the byres, into the barns, and they would be fed on the draught, on the spent grains from your mashing. And you would drink the whisky all winter long to keep yourself warm and then the cycle would begin again. So a real natural rhythm to it. That's what whiskey is all about. It's all about nature. It's all about the magic of this landscape. Peat is the key element here at Portel and Maltings. It's heavily peated malt that we specialise in making. Uh, what you see here is um, it's about a tonne of uh, Isla peats. Uh, we harvest about 3,000 tonnes of Isla peats a year. Um, a day like today where we've got the, the wind and the rain lashing on top of the heather, uh, it's, it's heather that's decomposing that generates peat and it, take, it, it refreshes itself at about one millimetre a year. So if you, if you consider Isla's land mass, it's very large. We're regenerating at a millimetre a year. It's quite a sustainable process that we've got going. In terms of how we harvest, Traditionally, it was a man digging out. Uh, it would be uh, laid out to dry, built up into to stooks. However, to get 3,000 tons, it would take an army of men. So what we use now is a tractor. It pulls along an extruder. It's almost like a chainsaw. Draws the peat up through an extruder, and it gives us this sausage-shaped peat. Um, we, we dry that off in the sunshine. We then harvest it and we've got a shed at the back of the maltings where we store that and we use the peat throughout the year. Uh, it's about six tonnes per batch uh, of peat that we burn. And when we're burning the peat, we're wanting to burn it differently from how you would in your house. So when you burn it in your house, you want lots of flame, lots of red, lots of heat. We don't want that. We want lots of smoke. So the operators at Portellan are real specialists in keeping a fire going just. So lots of smoke, uh, very little flame, very little heat. Uh, and they'll keep that fire going for about 16 hours. It's that first 16 hour stage of the drying process. Total drying cycle time's about 32 hours. But we find that when the moisture's on the outside of the malt, uh, that's when the peat smoke, the phenols, adhere best to the, uh, to the malt. So it's only for that initial 16 hour period that we, we burn the peat and we get the smoke adhering to the outside of the malt, and then we allow the fire to burn down. And it's at that stage where we allow the flame to break through. So the flame breaking through is, is only happens at the end of the peat fire as we allow it to burn down. During the main drying cycle, the main stage for applying the peat smoke, that's when we, we want lots of smoke and no flame. Okay, so what's different about the Isla peat? Well, the Isla peat's uh, mainly from heather. Um, in terms of the, the uh, slopes that it's on, they're all going to be getting lashed with rain. Uh, we're on the west coast of Scotland, it's pretty damp here most of the year. Um, and also, because we're so Atlantic, we get high winds, and that high winds lashes the waves against the, the coast. The sea spray blows inland and, and gives you some saltiness in the, the air, um, and that also joins the heather. The heather decomposes and, um, and gives you a, a, a quite a black peat. Um, what you can find with some of the other uh, peat that you get in the mainland, there's more trees 
more woody, and that gives you a different flavour. Okay, so this is us at uh, our mill room. This is where we really start to process uh, the malted barley at Ardbeg. Uh, nowadays, the most malted barley we, we use here comes from the maltings down in Port Ellen. It's made for us to our own specification. Uh, again, because it's Isla, this is uh, the big thing. One of the big flavour components for us is uh, the phenol level or the peat smoke that is on the malted barley. So we have the malted barley which comes in ready to us. So we give this maltings a specification to make it too. Now Ardbeg is the smokiest malt of any distillery in Scotland this for, our, for our regular whiskies. So this is peated up to about 55 parts per million, which is really rich and smoky. Comes from this stuff here, which is just basically burned to give, to, to give you smoke. And that's peat smoke when it's, the grain is being, uh, has been burned over a peat fire, sticks to the, the husk in the malted barley, and it stays with it then as it comes into the process. And then we take that flavouring from the husk and then it gets transferred into the liquid in the mash tun. So it's very, very important for us. It's a big, a big component. Uh, because it is very important, uh, the phenol level has to be correct when the malt comes into us. So when we take the malt in, I check the, to make sure the specification we get has been adhered to, to make sure it is the right level. So when we take the malt in from the maltings, uh, I make sure that we have the, that the analysis is right that comes in with it. Every load comes in telling us what the phenol level is, what the extract is. Uh, so that I can then look at it, compare it to our spec and make sure that we have the right malt when it comes in. Because once it comes into the distillery, we have to process it. It's the only way out. Uh, so this has to be, this peating level is very important. Because uh, as we, uh, we mash it, we ferment it, we distill it and then we mature it, you will lose a lot of the phenol level. So instead of having 55 ppm in the whiskey at the end, it'll be around about 20 to 25. So you lose just probably about half or maybe slightly more than half of the phenols. So it has to be correct at the start because if it's not correct at the start, it's not going to be correct at the end. And it's not what we would call Ardbeg. So it's, it's one of these things where we have to check this process all the way through. Yeah. I'm here on Hobbister Moor, just outside Kirkwall. This is where Highland Park hand cuts all its peat. Look around me, what can you see? Heather. That's what's important about this particular type of peat. Remember, peat is different. Peat is decomposing vegetation laid down over thousands and thousands of years. So what we're cutting now was the flora of thousands of years before. And Orkney has always been covered in heather. Not a lot of trees here. It's beginning to rain. I can actually taste the salt in my lips. There's no trees in Orkney, just this heather. So when you burn Orkney peat, you get a wonderful scented, heathery kind of smoke. How do we cut it? Well, the first thing that you would do would be to cut off this top layer, this turf. The turf is then laid away and new peat will start to grow or this will start to decompose and more layers are put on top of it. Then you cut down. This is a Tusker. It's an Orcadian peat spade. It's actually very different in design to the peat spades you get on Isla or even the ones you get on Sky. Every single island seems to have a slightly different mechanism to cut their peat with. The result is effectively the same. First thing I'm going to do is cut down this first layer. You can see there's lots of fibre in here, lots of roots. Younger peat. This hasn't decomposed quite as much. And this is going to give you really, really good smoke. Really good fragrant smoke. The peat reek. That's what you're using these top peats for. It's not the only layer because the second cut that you're going to be making, you're going further back in time. Everything here is more compressed, more deep. It's blacker. It's significantly harder to cut. This let me jump down. It looks a bit like a big chocolate cake. There's not so much fibre in here. It's much harder, much denser. Like any peat, doesn't smell of anything. But when you burn this, you get a different set of aromas and you get much, much more heat. You could continue to cut down 
another further layer and it would get even more dense. Look at this stuff here. This, when dried, would be almost like coal itself. The indigenous fuel of the highlands and islands here, such as Orkney. After all these peats are cut, they're going to be taken, carried across, and arranged in little stooks, and the air is passing through them, drying them naturally. It will take, well, as long as it takes. Sometimes it's going to rain, it might take a little bit longer. If the weather is dry, it's going to be shorter. The important thing is that this is all hand done. The important thing as far as flavour in Highland Park goes is the composition of that peat and what has happened over the millennia. Our peat, we own almost 2,000 acres at Hobbister Hill, seven miles west of here. The peat is so absolutely critical to a Highland Park product. It, to me, it's the absolutely fundamental part that makes up Highland Park whisky. There's lots of very important component parts, but personally, our peat really makes Highland Park the flavours of our whiskey.